straight talk with your host Reggie B. Come on, let's all join in. Free your voice, it's your choice, all right here. Oh, simply straight, simply straight talk. Hello? Hey, are you busy? No, what's going on? So, I heard that you've been acting real shy around Julia. Where did you hear that from? I've been handling my business. You know, intimacy issues are nothing to be ashamed of. Are you ashamed of your weight, or are you just scared of getting hurt? I'm a man. I'm cool and confident. Okay. Well, you better get it together, or you're going to be cold and alone. Bye. Reggie Maddox with the best radio talk on this side of the world. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Simply Straight Talk Show Season 5. This is your host, Reggie Maddox, and we are back with another season of great shows. And I'm telling you, you're going to love it, man. You gotta, you're going to love it. we got some great stuff we're going to talk about. And today... We're going to talk about intimacy issues. Now, I know you're probably saying, Reggie, why are you kicking off the season talking about intimacy issues? Well, let me tell you like this. The reason that we decided to kick it off, the reason I decided to kick it off with this is real plain and simple. A lot of people have intimacy issues and either they don't understand it Or they are not really acknowledging it. And some people are just embarrassed about it. But if you have intimacy issues and you're ignoring it, you're not acknowledging it, or you just simply don't understand, it can really affect how you interact with people, not just in a physical romantic type relationship, but also how you interact with people in a general social environment. So we want to talk about that because there are a lot of good people out there right now who are dealing with something and they just can't figure it out. And sometimes they may be constantly blaming the other person for the failed relationships that they continue to go through time and time again. But it's just a simple fact that they have there's some type of intimacy issue with people getting close to them. They haven't really dealt with. And we're going to kind of dive into that. Because you have to understand that intimacy issues can occur for several reasons. And like I said, many people are unaware of why they have intimacy issues. And some of these issues can really stem back to their childhood days. Now, oftentimes, intimacy issues turn into a fear of intimacy. So people who have a fear of intimacy have a tough time allowing others to get close to them on a personal level. They also don't share their emotions or feelings with others really pretty much at all. They, they just don't want to. Not even their partners, a person that they say they love, you know, they're going to hold back in it when it comes to that. You know, and in some cases, they fear to get intimate in a physical manner. You know, they may feel uncomfortable when somebody touches them in a general or in a specific way, you know, and it affects their ability to be happy and comfortable especially in this case, when you're talking about a sexual relationship with their partner. Now, when we talk about intimacy issues, I think we're going to need to kind of establish like, you know, what are some reasons that could trigger a person's fear of intimacy? I mean, what, what, what are some things that can trigger that fear or create that fear of, you know, a person being intimate or, you know, intimacy issues? OK, let me get this right. I think I have been all I took a little too long break, y'all. My break was too long. Okay, so when we're talking about a person having a fear and with intimacy issues, you know, we're talking about a fear revealing deep feelings and avoiding and disclosing such feelings. Because people really do when you you have an intimacy issue and it deals with, you know, just a fear of opening up, a fear of sharing, you know, or disclosing anything personal or private about yourself. You know, it's going to create a lack of communication. And your partner or your friend or family member, they, they won't understand what's going on because you're feeling some type of way inside. But because you have a fear of actually revealing your feelings and exposing yourself, 
You know, you may be displaying a certain type of behavior that other people just can't understand. They can't figure it out. And when that happens, it makes it very tough for you to be happy and satisfied in a relationship. And it also makes it tough on the other person to kind of be that person that you need in the relationship with you to give you that emotional or comforting support that you may need because that communication is not there. Also, when you or your partner avoid discussing any issues in your relationship, you know, that can contribute to some of the problems that can arise from an intimacy issue. Because when you avoid discussing anything, because, you know, you, you like I said, it's an intimacy issue. That means when you're discussing topics, especially stuff that you're not comfortable with, it makes you feel like, I don't want to discuss it because that means I'm opening myself up. I'm giving them something that they could possibly use against me. You know, in some cases, people won't even share their personal goals. They won't even share their dreams, things they want to do. Now, when you talk about a fear of intimacy and it gets into the fact of a lack of communication, avoiding discussing issues in the relationships and not sharing like your personal goals and dreams. A lot of this happens because at some point, maybe this person used to feel like I can open up, I can share, I can expose myself. But the person, whether it was a husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, friend, family member, may have just either shut them down, told them that, I mean, if they constantly hear like, oh, it was stupid, uh, or just disregarded everything they said, or maybe they grew up in a household where the parents just really shut them down when they tried to express things that they wanted, then they got in a relationship, they were shut down, and people disregarded what they say. You know, then they had friends that did the same thing, that was shutting them down, not taking them serious, disregarding what they believed in, what they wanted. You know, it can create a pattern that as this person gets older, they're going to have the, a mindset of, wow, you know, I can't, I can't open up to anybody. I can't share with anybody because if I tell somebody what I'm really feeling, they're going to laugh. They're going to mock me. They're going to shut me down. They're going to disregard it. They're going to be so, this, it's just going to be negative feedback. So I can't expose that part of me because if I do opening myself up for hurt, for pain, and disappointment. Now, also we want to talk about is avoiding and having a fear of being your partner's emotional support. Now, you're going to find cases where people who have intimacy issues, you know, this, this is tough for them. It's tough. You know, they may not know how to be, you know, the emotional support for their partner. And it scares them if they have to do that. You know, so they avoid it at all costs. And this could be because, you know what? You don't want to know what your partner's feelings and emotions are about. You know, you don't want to know what they're about. Because if you have to figure out what they're, if they're, if you're trying, if you are dealing with your partner's emotions and feelings, that means you yourself have to be emotionally involved. And some people, they rather just, and you people like this, now I'm not saying that to be negative towards them, but people who don't want to get emotionally involved and, you know, and showing emotional support and understanding and hearing their partner's problems, they will most likely try to keep the relationship on a surface level. Like every conversation is going to be like you going to work and you're just talking about things. Oh, sports. Oh, the weather. Oh, the basketball game. You're not going to talk about, they don't want to talk about any thing that's going to make them have to connect with you. Anything that's going to pull something from inside of them that's going to form a bond with you. They're going to try to avoid that because to be your emotional support, they have to connect with you. You have to connect with a person, which means you have to open yourself up mentally and emotionally. And some people simply when they got that intimacy issue in that aspect, they're not going to want to discuss that stuff. So like I said before, what they're going to do, they're going to talk about things that are just really kind of non-relevant and just sort of happy. I mean, they're talking about other people that they can laugh and joke, but you're going to notice anything where you're having an emotional need, they are not going to want to fulfill it. You're going to get a generic 
comfort statement. It'll be okay. Come on, let's go out to eat. Something to distract you and them from the whole conversation so they don't have to talk about it. Going to the movies, going to a game, going bowling. Because they're all trying to say, if I take your mind off what you're feeling, then I don't have to get my feelings involved in trying to be what you need. Because I can't do that. I'm not in that place. Next thing is not showing concern for your partner when they're stressed or, you know, or just like have an emotional breakdown, you know, the inability to show concern. And that goes back to what we just talked about. You know, sometimes a person just feels like I can't do this. You know, I don't want to connect like this. And if they show that they're concerned, if they show that they're invested in you, they feel like they've exposed themselves. They feel like they've opened themselves up once again to be hurt. Now, emotionally hurt, observing someone close to you emotionally hurt or being ignored is something that maybe they experience. Because you got to realize something. Oftentimes when a person has intimacy issues, something has happened to them previously. They have either been in some type of relationship or something with their family members or friends has caused them to react this way. Something has made them feel like, you know what? I got emotionally tied to somebody and it ended up putting me in debt. They took advantage of me. You know, I got ignored when I was hurt, but I gave them all my emotional support. Some people feel like I put so much energy into other people that I'm not giving my energy away anymore. I'm not giving that to anybody anymore. So it will just take time. And that's something that a person really has to deal with because the other person in the relationship is going to feel like I'm opening up to you and sharing and giving you me, but I'm getting a wall back from you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not getting you. You're not giving me anything. So they're not going to feel connected. They're going to feel like, well, I feel connected to you, but I feel like you cut the lines that connect me to you. So when you throw me a love line, I catch it and I'm holding on to it. But I feel like when I throw you a love line, it's sort of like, ah, okay, let that fall in the water. I know it's there and maybe one day I will pick it up. But for right now, just hold on to what I'm giving you and you'll be okay. And it's not okay because that person is going to feel cheated. And they're going to feel like you're not interested in them. They're going to feel like you don't care about them. You're not sincere, which can lead to problems. And the truth of it is, it may be the total opposite. You could really care about them. But because of your having intimacy issues and communication and expression, you don't know how to do it, how to get over that. And your partner, your friends are paying the price. Now, here's one that. Oh, uh, now this one, how do I say this? I'm going to try to keep this. I don't want to make this explicit because, you know, certain language on these on the show, I will have to label the show as explicit or sexual content. So this one section, I'm going to try to keep it as G as possible, but just a little spoiler warning. And like they do for the movies when they do the movie reviews, spoiler warning. This next section I'm going to try to keep it. It is a sensual part of intimacy issues, but I'm not going to be graphic. So if you have kids and you're listening to this and there's kids around, you know, you might want to either put on some headphones or send them to play somewhere else. But I'm going to try to keep it clean as much as possible because I don't want to influence anybody's child with a topic that parents should be discussing with them and not me. Okay, so this next one is not allowing yourself to be spontaneous or adventurous with your partner in the bedroom. So now we're talking about couples, you know, in the previous two statements, I was talking about something that could refer to couples. It could refer to, you know, for family members, your friends, but this one is general is really directed towards couples because this is something that a lot of people do have an issue with. And when it comes to the bedroom with your partner, You know, some people say that opposites attract. Okay, And it's important for each partner to bring something different to the table. And that includes the bedroom. However, these differences can lead to a lack of communication 
Because like I said, intimacy issues is not all about performance in the bedroom. It's not all, all, all about performance. Because when you're talking about being intimate, you can be intimate in conversation. You can be intimate in flirting. You can be intimate just in sitting next to each other, just in cuddling, just in watching TV, cooking together. So intimate is a very big word with a lot of ways it can be expressed. So when you are talking about couples or partners, you know, bringing something to the different to the table, that includes the bedroom. And oftentimes you're going to run into situations to where you're going to have people that simply just don't know how to kind of maneuver that. But we got to take a break. That's right. We got to take a break. So we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and we're going to pick this right back up. I hope you guys are enjoying this. So you guys stay tuned right here. We'll be right back on the Simply Straight Talk Show. We'll be back with your host, Reggie, on Simply Straight Talk. There are so many talented young men and women attending our HBCUs. Don't you think it's time we show them our support? This year, Reggie will be highlighting HBCU bands, dance teams, and sports programs. And we are inviting you to show your love as well by attending games in your area. When you buy tickets to attend these events, you are helping to support not only the programs, but the great minds of our future generation as well. To the Simply Straight Talk Show, bringing you the best conversation on your morning, afternoon, and prime time drive. Hey, everybody, welcome back to part two of the Simply Straight Talk Show. Today, we are talking about intimacy issues. First part of the show, we gave you some trigger moments that could cause a person to really stir up their intimacy issues. Now, we left off the show talking about you know, intimacy issues as far as not being spontaneous or adventurous in the bedroom with your partner. Like I said, we're going to keep this PG so you really don't have to worry about your child hearing any graphic or any graphic type sexual talk, anything like that. But we left off, we were talking about, you know, how opposites do attract. But in the bedroom, however, you know, you might want some differences and the lack of communication in that can cause some problems. And we was moving into that some of the most common issues starts with couples not being on the same page. And this can include, you know, like different sexual appetites, desires, fantasies, and arousal, arousal, or ways of stimulation. And because, you know, when you have these times, when you have an intimacy issue, you may not be good at expressing that. I don't like that. This is what I want, or I need more of this. So that plays a part. And we also talked about People having difficulty, you know, communicating their needs, having open dialogue about pleasure and sexual communication. And when you have intimacy issues in this area, it really can have a harsh effect on a relationship. I mean, and because this can come from the fact that, you know, a person may have experienced something, you know, from their past that, you know, let's put it like this. They may have engaged in the act of intercourse with someone. And maybe that person was a little forceful in the process of maybe making them try oral or maybe making them try a position that was uncomfortable and it ended up being painful or just resulted in something that was really negative that the other person felt so much discomfort or uncomfortable about the whole situation that now they just have a serious issue with it. They don't try it. They don't want to do it. So when it comes to being, you know, sensual in that manner, it's like, listen, missionary, that's what we're going to do. Take it or leave it. 
That's all you're getting. And the other person feels like, well, they're not attracted to me or I don't turn them on. Or they may, may be a person that's more adventurous and feel like, listen, you know, I think, you know, that part of our life as far as being sexually, you know, in the bedroom is just really boring. And I just want a little, a little more. I want a little more adventure, spontane spontaneity. Spont I can't say it today, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But the thing about it is when you can't communicate about these things, it really does pose problems. It really does pose a problem because for many people, you know, just gaining awareness and insight into their own obstacles and origins of their physical intimacy difficulties is important. It's important that they gain awareness about this and they get some insight as to why I feel like this, why I don't like this. And, you know, communicating these issues with their partner is valuable and it can reduce the anxiety that's going to come with you being intimate with your partner because you, you can't just hide these things and say, you know, this is what it is. Take it or leave it, you know, because you have to consider your partner. And like I say, some people have been through a very traumatic experience, especially like somebody who's been through a child molestation, who was molested as a child, somebody who's been raped, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe somebody who's been touched inappropriately on, more, you know, on various occasions, they may have an intimacy issue about being touched a certain way, even though the person really loves them and think, hey, I'm just flirting to them. It's like, I don't like that. I had it done to me. I don't want it. Don't ever do that again. And the other person doesn't quite understand it. So you have to kind of explain that so they understand why, where this is coming from. And, you know, and some people, you know, their intimacy issue is so deep to the fact that, you know, they will break off a relationship before it reaches the point of getting serious. I mean, any reference or experience, you know, anything that shows a sign of, listen, we're starting to get serious. OK, it's time to break up. It's time to break up. I can't do this. OK, now. Intimate issues in relationship. You know, we got to talk about how do you deal with your intimacy issues? OK, because you obviously can't use a time machine to rewrite your past to correct whatever caused it. But you can change how you feel about your past. And the act of changing your mindset is done by forgiveness. OK, and I know that's kind of hard. I know it's tough. But simply put, a relationship cannot be healthy or intimate if forgiveness is not present daily. So unresolved issues without forgiveness will kill your opportunity for future relationships. So you got to remember that. And one of the key things that you got to do is communication. And we talked about that throughout the show. You know, talking about sex is hard. Telling your partner that, you know, you love them, but you're not happy with your sex life is even harder. In fact, it might feel impossible to start a conversation about all the things you don't like or you feel comfortable about with your partner. You might feel that airing your dislikes will make your partner feel rejected or like, you know, or they may, you may say like, man, they feel like I don't, they may feel like that you don't love them. And that's not necessarily true. You know, it's the fact that something has something happened to you that made you feel that way. And you have to communicate that and try to get that out so they can understand, you know. Because instead, you know, disappointment in your sex life usually means that you and your partner aren't communicating your needs and desires clearly. And this is dangerous because although I do not approve of this, some people will go outside of the relationship because they don't feel that they're getting what they need from their partner. So communication is key. Talk to each other. Try to understand what the other person is saying. Don't take it personal when they say, listen, you know, I know you like this or I know you like doing this. Or I want to get to know you more. I want to get close to you. This is not just about sexual stuff. This is in general. When you have an intimacy issue of connecting with people, opening up to people, let them know that, you know, hey, all my life I've been shut down. All my life people have disregarded what I've said. You know, I I was raped. You know, this person touched me, touched me. You know, express that. Give them a chance to understand and work through it. Now, one thing that I have to say about all this is never rule out counseling. 
Okay, because there are some cases of intimacy issues where you need professional counseling to help guide you and a family member, you and a friend, or you and your husband or wife through this process. You know, seeking the help of a counselor would not only be beneficial to you, but also for your relationships. You might need to schedule some sessions, you know, even with your partner and some by yourself. A counselor can address the cause of your fear and work with you on overcoming it. You know, and they will also try to break the barriers of your fear, you know, and help you to, you know, help you with speaking about your feelings because a lot of people keep all of this stuff inside. So, you know, with the help of a counselor, you can tackle the communication issues that lead to you having intimacy issues physically, emotionally in your relationships. Now, when you are seeking counselors, you know, make sure that you choose one. If it's dealing with your husband, wife, make sure you choose one that deals with marital issues. Or if it's dealing with family and friends, make sure you choose one that's a counselor that has experience with family. And you know what I'm saying? That's a family counselor. So make sure you get in a counselor that's best going to work for you. Now, I have never done online counseling, but I know that that's really big right now. And for some people, to be honest with you, the online counseling is more affordable and it it can be more convenient because you're not having to go to an office at a certain time. You can do it from home right there. But sometimes being in a different environment kind of feels better. But then again, some people kind of feel better at home. Now, some people use a sex therapist, but let me clear up any myths about sex therapists because I want you to understand this. A sex therapist, okay, they don't, there are no exams, there is no nudity, and there is certainly no sexual touching. So get that out the way right now, because anybody that offers you, that tells you that sex therapy is about actually having physical, and of course, no, it's not. It's counseling, but it's actually discussing your intimacy issues or your sexual intimacy issues. So keep that in mind. There are no exams. You know, there's no nudity. And like I said, certainly, absolutely, there is no sexual touching. Okay. Now, emotional issues, it's the same thing. You know, there are times when we seek an emotional bond with somebody and being accepted for ourselves, love for ourselves, sharing our happiness, or for that matter, tough times. And it's important not to confuse sexual intimacy with emotional issues. Although they may be linked in some faction, you know, but the acts of sex is not an answer for emotional issues. And I think sometimes people get that mixed up. You know, understanding the importance of having a mental connection and being accepted and sharing special moments and sincerity of that support. Is, 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 is amazing and I think a lot of people look for that in life they want that true mental emotional connection which is not based on physically touching but is that that emotional support so we got to make sure we understand that all right guys we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with the final word of today's show we're talking about intimacy issues right here on the simplest straight talk show Hey, Simply Straight Talk family, your host Reggie will be right back, so don't you dare touch that dial. Hey, are you looking for some great music, upbeat, and with a positive voice? Well, the song I Stand With You is exactly what you need. This timeless song has a pop version sung by Audrey Carmel. And a reggae version sung by General Steele, now known as Revelation. These songs are now available on iTunes and other digital platforms for download. Don't miss out. Get your copy today. Are you ready for the straight truth? Reggie, what's the final word for today? Hey, everybody. Welcome back for the final thoughts of today's show. Today, we're talking about intimacy issues. 
And, you know, a lot of people deal with this and some people are embarrassed. Some people try to hide it while other people simply just ignore it and maybe just say, feel like it's not me. It's everybody else. I want to tell you this. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging the fact that you have intimacy issues. It doesn't mean that you need to share it with the world, but it does mean that if you do want to have more positive, better relationships or more successful relationships, it means that you're going to have to face the issues that you have regarding intimacy. And that's whether it's just being emotionally there for somebody, whether it's just being communication wise, social wise, or even as we talked about earlier in the show, you know, in the bedroom, in your marriage, you know, you got to discuss these issues, discuss them with your partner. And if you can't seem to bring it to your partner, don't be ashamed to get counseling to help you get through it, to help you, you know, actually be able to open up. Because sometimes talking to a counselor will help you to kind of feel free to express how you're feeling and you can get some advice on how to bring this up to your partner. Because you could be in a great relationship and with the right person. But the fact that your intimacy issues may be sending false messages or signals to your mate that you do love them. You do want to satisfy and please them and be happy. Or even with your friends, you know, you realize that you do have a great friend and you do care about them or family members. But because your intimacy issues, there's a wall, there's a blockage that's not allowing you to give and put out what they are giving you. So they feel that you're not invested in them. So that's why you getting the help you need, you actually bringing this to the table and saying, listen, I'm going to deal with this. I'm going to face this. There is nothing wrong with me. I just need guidance. That's all it is. You're getting guidance. You're not broken. You're not a damaged person. You're not somebody, you know, that's just out there thrown away. You just got a portion of your life that you need to tear down that wall and get some guidance in how to move past whatever your intimacy issue is. We all have them. It is nothing. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Some people have intimacy issues because of their weight. I struggle with my weight. And you guys know the story. I lost 73 pounds, then I gained 73 pounds back. And, you know, when you're a big person, you know, you don't feel as comfortable with your body when you're with someone. You know what I'm saying? Because you're always thinking like, Oh my God, does she think I'm too fat? Does she, does she find me attractive? Why is she with me? And you know, you get all this anxiety and you start questioning yourself. So you need to learn that you got to get help. You got to bring this to the table and have those conversations. And if you're the person to where your mate, your friend, your family member comes to you about an issue they're having of being intimate, open up, emotional. Remember, intimacy issues are not always sexual. Be that person that listens. And don't be afraid to say, hey, well, why don't we get counseling so we go through this together? Take your time. Get to understand what that person is going through. Because sometimes it was a traumatic event. And a lot of times the things we go through in our life, we often don't come back and tell anybody because we're ashamed. We blame ourselves. We're embarrassed. So we try to hide it. But ultimately, when you hide it, you're burying it deep down inside yourself. And that's when you those trigger moments brings it up. When your spouse touches you and you jump and you flinch and you're upset and you don't know why you're mad, they don't understand why you're mad. They thought they was being kind and gentle or a friend says something to you or, you know, a friend just kind of like starts opening up about something they're going through in their life and they want you to share, but you refuse to because that means you're sending out an emotional cord that you do not want to get attached to anybody else. So you are swatting away their emotional cords and you are tying yours up so they can't get outside your body and attach to anybody else because you don't want to get hurt. You don't want to be disappointed. You don't want to be abandoned. You don't want people to have what you would consider a weapon to use against you. You know what? Take care of yourself and taking care of yourself means facing those things that are a challenge to you in life. Hey, 
Thank you for listening to the Simply Straight Talk Show. This is your host, Reggie. Don't forget to join us next Friday where we have more, more great topics coming up for you. Hey, and also don't forget to check out, we are going to be promoting HBCU football, basketball games, sporting events. You can win free tickets right here on the Simply Straight Talk Show. We're going to send you to the game, baby. When you get to the game, we're just going to give you the tickets. Later. That's this week's episode. Thank you for listening and being a part of the Simply Straight Talk podcast. We truly appreciate your support. Be sure to visit us at simplystraighttalk.com to join the conversation, access show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content on Patreon. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to join us next week for another episode.